What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Just Chad podcast. As always, I'm Chad, and this is a face that you have not seen before. This is a very special person who is near and dear to my heart, my good friend and brother-in-law, D-Doggy G. What's up, man? This is Dave over here. Hey, how you doing, Chad? What's going on, man? I appreciate you jumping on tonight to hang out with us and go through this Bible study. Uh, for everybody watching, welcome to the Just Chad podcast and YouTube channel where you can find content that is focused around faith, family, and fitness so we can all grow together to overcome the stresses and darkness that plague our lives daily. And what better way to express faith, family, and fitness than having family right here on the podcast? Doing all right, buddy? Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Excited. <laughs> this is Dave's uh, first time on uh, the podcast and really uh, social media stuff, isn't it? Oh, pretty much, yeah. Not not my usual thing. But, yeah, uh... which is funny because you're <laughs> such a huge IT guy and computer guy. Dave like behind, is more, yeah. Dave's more behind, behind the scenes, scenes kind of yeah, guy. Yeah. Not That's so much, uh, not so much in the in front of the camera like mm -hmm. uh, yours truly over here. But that's okay. This is a extremely smart gentleman over here, you guys. He is a jack of all trades, a true craftsman over here. I just want to let you guys know that this man can build some stuff. You want to talk about Jesus being a carpenter? This guy right here. <laughs> I'm just telling you. But uh, so, how's your day been, bro? It's been it's been good. It's been a busy day as always. You know. Yeah. Had a service this morning, and weather was nice. So it was outdoors most of the day today. Where, what'd you where? think? Uh, what'd you think of that service this morning? So, you guys, this morning we had a church service. My family watched online. If you checked my Instagram, you would have saw on the story. But uh, they were in uh, the, the pastor. Pastor Corey was talking about the story in First Kings. First Kings. So, what did you think of yeah. the service this morning? Oh, uh, it, it was a great service. I mean, even even before the uh, actual the main service itself, the the worship was was great. Yeah, you know they introduced, introduced that new song today, and normally new songs takes a little while to kind of get used to it, and you know it's not always the kind of most exciting thing the first time they play it because no one knows the words that well or the, or the song. But I feel like today it went down really well, so that was like a great start to the service even before they started preaching. But. Right? Do you ever when when they introduce new songs, do you do you sing the song or do you? Because I when I when they introduce new songs mm -hmm. and, and I'm not you know uh, familiar with it, you know, because sometimes mm -hmm. they'll introduce new songs that you've heard on the radio, right? Yeah. And yeah. if I'm not familiar with it, then usually I'll just kind of like mouth it. I don't actually <laughs> sing it because I want to. Yeah, usually, usually, you never know. They try to like split it up and break right. things up. Usually the first like the first verse or two, you kind of yeah, you just kind of move along with it, but don't really sing it, just because like you said, sometimes the the words will be on the screen, but it won't be sung like how it looks. It'll be like right. a stop or pause or like be like a long word somewhere, and it'll throw right. you off. So yeah, usually the first verse or two, I'm just kind of figuring out the song. Right, or sometimes right. they'll just like throw in like a random like praise Jesus, you know what right. I mean? <laughs> You're just like wait, yeah. what? That's yeah, yeah. they can throw you off. But uh, just so you guys know, um, I'm going to go off here for a quick second. Just so you guys know, um, we are live on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. I cannot see the uh, comments on Instagram right now because I will be sharing the, uh, the, the Bible verses. Usually Brando takes care of that for me so I can see uh, Instagram comments. But tonight, obviously, Brando's not with us. So I'm going to be taking care of that as well. Um, so I cannot see the comments over on Instagram. So if you guys have questions, comments, you want to say anything, you're more than welcome to post them over on Instagram, but I can't see them. So I highly suggest, even if you're over on TikTok, filter on over to YouTube because it's a lot easier for me to see them. Dave, can you see the comments over there? I was just, just looking. I can see a few comments. Looks like they're from YouTube because of the symbol. Okay. So yep. YouTube. So Dan L says, hello, Dave. Hope all is well. Alyssa says, hi, Chad and Dave. And Tara says, hi, guys. Yep. You can see those? I do see those. Yep. Perfect. Thank I love you. it. As always, you guys, make sure that we are keeping it respectful. This is all about fellowship. I don't want to have to block anybody or kick anybody out, but it will happen. We are focusing on Matthew 17 tonight. Um, if you're over on TikTok, uh, I believe... 
uh, retros on TikTok, and so is Alyssa Luna. I think you guys are moderators. So if anybody's uh, disrespectful over there, take care of them. Take care of them. Um, aside from that, you guys, please make sure that you are like sharing and subscribing or following wherever you're watching from to the channel. It does help push it out to more people that can receive this word and, uh, yeah, all that fun stuff. So anyways, let's go ahead and get into it. What do you think? I think so. You ready? Do it. Awesome. Go. <clears throat> all right, you guys. We're going to go ahead and jump into Matthew 17. Oh, before we do that, Dave. Oh, I got cat hair in my mouth. <laughs> um, before we jump into it, do you want to uh, tell the folks a little bit about yourself? Uh, sure. Yeah. So actually, my name is Dave, uh, Chad's brother-in-law, and uh, <clears throat> originally from England. I've been in the U.S. for maybe how long now? 20 say 23 years now and uh <clears throat> you know, i've been going to our church now for I think, over 10 years you know, grew up going to church as a kid went through you know, a couple of different churches a couple of different stages but now i've been going to our uh, our current church for over 10 years and you know looking forward to always learning more about jesus spending time with family like chad said and meeting some new people here so looking forward to it Yes, I love it, man. Hopefully you can uh, hopefully you find this uh, enjoyable and uh, fun at the same time and come back for more because that's my goal is to have more people come on the podcast. Mm -hmm. And uh, next week, Brando will be back. We're streaming live on a random day today, Sunday. Usually we go live, you guys, every Saturday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um but uh, today's an off night because last night I was accidentally out of town until late than I later than I planned to be. And so we bumped it to tonight. So Brando couldn't be with us, but otherwise he would be with us hanging out. Uh, it'd be me, Dave and Brando. So hopefully you can join us again next week, bro. It looks like a Dan said they can't hear me on TikTok, but I'm not sure how that works here in some places yeah so you guys uh you guys won't hear dave over on tiktok that's part of the reason why i try to filter you guys over to youtube and instagram and facebook you guys will not hear dave on tiktok i'm just letting you guys know if you're watching from tiktok you're not gonna hear him on tiktok uh he doesn't he's not live on tiktok so you can't see him on tiktok amanda on tiktok however says i'm praying for you brother uh yeah that's I don't know what who that never mind. Then we're not gonna we're not gonna deal with that comment. <laughs> anyway. Um Tara says she likes your accent. Well, thank you. Le legit Ooh. says, why is my profile pic is a gray circle? I have no idea. That's probably on your end. That's probably on your end. <laughs> anyway, you guys, uh if you guys are ready for it, what's up, Carrie on TikTok? Uh we'll go back and forth talking about comments like i said before this is all about fellowship again don't forget to like like share and subscribe you guys if you won't hear dave on tiktok but if you want to hear dave if you want to see the man the myth the legend come over to youtube and 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 hang out uh i can also see comments over there so without further ado let's go ahead and jump into this bible study what do you say let's do it uh all right we're gonna go ahead and bring this up you guys tonight we are in matthew 17 and I am reading out of the NIV study Bible as always. So if you want to follow along, I got it over here up on the screen. And we'll talk a little bit about the study notes and all that fun stuff. We're going to be here for about an hour, you guys. Because um, we all got to get up early and go to work tomorrow. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and jump on in. Uh, Matthew 17, this is Jesus is transfigured on the mountain. So Dave, I'm going to take uh, verse 1 through 13. And if you got anything to talk about at the end, we'll talk about it. If I got anything, I'll talk about it. People in the chat, talk about it. We'll talk about study note. If we don't have anything, then we'll just keep on going. Sounds good. All right. So uh, Jesus transfigured on the mountain. After six days, Jesus took with Peter... I'm sorry, let me start over. I was looking at the wrong thing here for a second. I just want to make sure that I'm able to move. All right, there we go. 
So after six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah, talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While, we, while he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. Hang on, I'm scrolling this down real quick. Uh, As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instructed them, Don't tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The disciples asked him, Why then do the teachers of the law say that Elijah must come first? Jesus replied, To be sure, Elijah comes and will restore all things. But I tell you, Elijah has already come, and they will not recognize him, but have done to him everything they wished. In the same way, the Son of Man is going to suffer at the hands. Then the disciples understood that he was talking to them about John the Baptist. Uh, I thought my kids walked in the door for a second. Um, so just to jump over to 17.3, which says, Just then there appeared before him Moses, Elijah, and talking with Jesus. Uh, 17.3 study note says, The transfiguration was a foretaste of heaven. The participants were doing something worth noting. They were talking together. Or they were talking together. In God's world, interactions count highly. People are individuals with minds, hearts, and opinions. People are also part of a wider whole connected by relationships built on sharing between whole persons. Friendship is key. Make uh, friendship is key. Make time and find opportunities to talk with others. Good conversations act as training for eternity. Um, but there's something that I was wondering as I was reading this. When Jesus says, don't tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. Do you think the disciples knew what they were ta- what he was talking about when he said that? I, mean, I, I know he like references it a few different times about his you know, death and resurrection. Um, so at the time, I mean, I don't know if they knew exactly you know, what he was referring to. No, like I said, I think he talks about it again either later on this, maybe in this chapter or maybe in a previous chapter, but he he references it several times. And I don't think they really I don't think they really want to believe it, maybe, you know, yeah. that, that that could happen to him. He, he they've seen the miracles, they've seen, you know, like talking with God, and I don't think they kind of really understand that what's gonna happen to him at that point. Right. I don't think they, they really understand. I think to an extent, because if I'm not mistaken, yeah, in chapter 16, where Jesus predicts his death and then, uh, you know, Peter's like, oh, no, that's, you know, that won't happen. You know what I'm saying? Because it says Peter took him aside. I'm just flipping back. It says Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. It says, never, Lord, he said, shall there never that never happen to you. And then that's the, the verse where Jesus is like, get behind me, Satan. You're a stumbling block to me. You know what I mean? So I feel like to an extent, they probably really still like jesus is trying to tell them but they're not it's not clicking you know what i'm saying yeah so um but the study note for that verse specifically says jesus told peter james and john not to tell anyone what they had seen until after his resurrection because he knew that they didn't fully understand it and could not explain what they didn't understand their question in 1710 uh, revealed their misunderstandings. They knew that Jesus was the Messiah, but they had much more to learn about the significance of his death and resurrection. So, um, Kirsten over on uh, TikTok says, whoops, said, I think they're still trying to understand. No, I completely agree with that. Um, 
I've been saying that a lot lately. And then uh, Tara over on YouTube asks where I'm from. <laughs> I'm originally from upstate New York. Uh, like Dave, uh, I've been, well, I've been going to the church that we're going to for roughly about 10 years, um, plus or minus a couple of years. Uh, I've been in Virginia since 2000 and four 2005 something like that it's been a long time so yes originally from upstate new york so i might have that little bit of that little bit of that tootie accent my wife says my tone is very direct so <laughs> yeah i can see that I can see. uh yeah my tone always gets me in <clears throat> trouble my tone always gets me in trouble. Anyways, I forgot to flip this up so people can see your handsome face there, Dave. Um, what's that? So it's much better now. Yes. And too bad I'm only going to have it up for a couple seconds because we're about to get back into the reading. <laughs> I always forget swapping between screens. Uh, Jen says, I thought you sounded like you had an upstate New York accent. Yes, I am from upstate, upstate New York. Born and raised. A show. All right, Dave. Uh, do you okay. want to take the next section, which is verse 14 through 20? Jesus heals a demon-possessed boy. Uh, yeah, sounds good. <clears throat> when they came to the crowd, a man approached Jesus and knelt before him. Lord, have mercy on my son, he said. He has seizures and is suffering greatly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. You're, you unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus replied. <clears throat> How long shall I stay with you? How long should I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of the boy and he was healed at that moment. Then the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, because you have so little faith. Truly, I tell you, if you have the faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Mm, I love it. I love that. It's a good one. <clears throat> so... I don't know, man. There's a couple couple questions that I had brewing around in there, but let me let me go ahead and read the study note here. It says uh, verse 17 through 20 says the disciples had been unable to drive out this demon, and they asked Jesus why. He said the quality of their faith was insufficient. The power of God plus our faith is what moves obstacles and heals people. To the disciples, the mustard seed was the smallest particle imaginable. Jesus said that even faith as small or undeveloped as a mustard seed would have been sufficient. Perhaps the disciples had tried to drive out the demon with their own ability rather than God's. Even a little faith has great potential when we trust in God's power to act. If we feel weak or powerless as Christians, we should examine our faith, making sure we are trusting God's power, not our ability to produce the results. So what's hard for me to understand or not really understand, but what what's it's always difficult for me when I think about these things, because like the disciples, he says the disciples have little faith. Right. Mm -hmm. But they've been walking with him for a while now, seeing the miracles. Right. So why? How is their faith still so <laughs> small in seeing what he what he's done? Yeah. Yeah, when, when I was reading that, I mean, I, I was thinking about that. I mean, there's many examples where they, you know, they either lack faith or they're kind of unsure that Jesus is going to kind of be there for them or, or save them. And I had that same kind of question, like, how could you think that when, like you said, you're literally walking and, and living with him? And I think it kind of comes down to you can, you can see things like it on earth or things physically, but that's not where, you know, faith comes from. Faith doesn't come right. from seeing things, especially not earthly things. 
I think it just comes down to that faith is different from actually being there. If you can be there with Jesus and still lack faith, obviously that's kind of not where your, the faith comes from, from just seeing right. it or just, you know, what things we can see on earth or understand on earth. Obviously our, our understanding of what happens in heaven or God's way is not anywhere close to where it, where it would need to be to understand kind of what's going right. on there. No, so I, just, uh, that's great. I love, I love that. So everybody on TikTok is like, we can't hear him. You, you're not going to. <laughs> you have to go over <clears throat> to YouTube if you want to hear the full conversation of what's going on. I probably should have put that in the description. I got nine people over on YouTube watching right now. You're only going to hear me if you want the full version of this Bible study the reading that Dave is getting and everything, you got to go to either YouTube, Instagram, or Facebook. Um, the main reason I'm live on TikTok right now is because uh, I usually always go live on TikTok when I do these. So, But you're only going to get half of this. So I need you to go over to YouTube or Instagram or Facebook <laughs> if you want to catch the full thing. <clears throat> so uh, everybody on TikTok, go over there. Uh, you missing some good insight over here from Dave. He is uh, he's on fire right now. He's on fire, I'm telling you that was great, man. I appreciate that. Um, Jennifer says moved over to YouTube since I was missing half the study. <laughs> hey, well, that's what you got to do. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. There's no way for me to link it over there. Uh, go. Carrie's asking how you find it over on uh, YouTube. You can go over to YouTube and look up just Chad, or you can go to the bio on my TikTok. It's got all my social medias on that beacons link at the top and click YouTube. It'll take you right over there. You get to see all the fun banners and all that cool stuff. Anyway, um, with that being said, if you're watching on Instagram, if you just popped up over there, I cannot see your comments over there because I'm sharing the, the actual Bible. So shoot on over to youtube i can see everything over here you guys it's a much better experience um filter that way <laughs> anyways uh let's go ahead and move on i'm gonna go ahead and read the next uh couple sections shoot man we might even get into 18 today i mean we might as well because this 17 is a short chapter mm -hmm. um so i'm gonna go ahead and take verses 22 i'm gonna just take us right to the end of the chapter all right all right uh, all right. Verse 22. Jesus predicts his death a second time. It says, when they came together in Galilee, he said to them, the son of man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him. And on the third day, he will be raised to life. And the disciples were filled with grief. Peter finds the coin in the fish's mouth. After Jesus and his disciples arrived in Capernaum, the collectors of two drechma, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce that, temple tax, came to Peter and asked, doesn't your teacher pay the temple tax? Yes, he does, he replied. When Peter came into the house, Jesus was the first to speak. What do you think, Simon? He asked. From whom do the kings of the earth collect duty and taxes from their own children or from others? From others, Peter answered. Then the children are exempt, Jesus said to him. But so that we may not cause offense, go to the lake and throw out your line. Take the first fish you catch, open its mouth, and you will find four drechma coin. Take it and give it to them for my tax and yours. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that, isn't that crazy? <laughs> He's just like, go fishing and you'll get some money. That's one way to do it. Yeah. Like, I wish I wish I could do that. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> can barely catch go, fish, let alone anything go, else. Right. I want to go fishing and see, see if for us, we would have to go fishing and sell the fish to go make that money. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> but uh, let me see here if I can find something good over here in a study note. 24 through 27 says, Peter answered. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, let's, let's talk about this one real quick. 17, 22 through 23 says, Once again, Jesus predicted his own death. More important, he told of his resurrection. Unfortunately, the disciples heard only the first part of Jesus's words and became discouraged. They couldn't understand why Jesus wanted to go back to Jerusalem, where he would walk right into trouble. 
The disciples didn't fully comprehend the purpose of Jesus' death and resurrection until Pentecost, Acts chapter 2. They didn't know that Jesus' death and resurrection would make his kingdom possible. We shouldn't get upset at ourselves for being unable to understand everything about Jesus. After all, the disciples spent three years with him, saw his miracles, and heard his words, but they still had difficulty understanding. Despite their questions and doubts, however, they believed. We should do no less. And I I love how the study note points that out because... Uh, specifically where it says they didn't know that Jesus' death and resurrection would make his kingdom possible. We shouldn't get upset at ourselves for being unable to understand everything about Jesus. That's something that I battled with for a long time, when, uh, when I, especially when I first came to Christ. Because, um, you know, I, I wanted to, to know as much as I possibly could about Jesus, about the Bible. Um, and you just see people in their faith that are so much further along than others, right? But that's why your faith, it's not um, its not a race, it's a marathon. And that's how you grow in your relationship with Christ is to get into your Bible and mm-hmm. read it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, it's definitely like a, you know, a personal journey. Like you said, it's sometimes you can see other people and see how come I'm not there. I'm not, you know, in that same place. But it, like I said, it's a personal journey. And you're all going to make your own own way there. Right. Exactly. And and people are at different places in their walk. You know what I mean? They're at different yeah. places in their journey. They're at different places in their understanding. And the more you you are in your Bible, the more you uh, pray and connect and grow in your relationship with Christ, the more you're going to understand, the more the, I've, the more the Holy Spirit is going to open your eyes to the teachings of Jesus and the teachings that God wants you to see in his word. I see it all the time. Every time I open this word, this that's why they call it the living word, you guys. That's why they call it the living word, because every time you read it, you can read the same verse a hundred times, going to speak to you a hundred different ways. Mm-hmm. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I guess it kind of touches on what we did talk about service today about being in the zone. Yeah. You know, sometimes things can happen and you can be in the zone, you know, when you get baptized or you have a big experience or something happens and you kind of get in that zone and everything seems to be kind of going in the direction you want it to go. But then sometimes if you don't kind of work on that relationship and like said, study the Bible or you know, go to service, things like that. You can kind of just be run of the mill going through the, the motions and not really kind of being in that zone and growing, growing on your, uh, on your journey. No, oh, absolutely. And I, that, that service hit me good today. It was a, it was like, hmm, it was perfect timing because here recently you ever get, have you ever gotten just like, uh, and I'm sure you have. I feel like we all have. But you ever just get to a point like in your prayers where you just get you hit like a plateau in your prayers? Like it doesn't feel like you're really being bold in your prayers. And and sometimes I even get down on myself because I'm like, I'll read like some of the prayers in the Bible. and I'm like, man, I want to pray like that. And I'll even pray to God, like, please help me to pray like that. Like, I feel yeah. like my prayers are just getting very... <laughs> very stagnant. You know what I mean? And, and mm-hmm. I don't like it when that happens. Um, and so today's service uh, with our church definitely was at a perfect time because he was talking about exactly that. Like Dave was just saying, being in the zone, like being in the zone with God. And sometimes you might just be standing like right outside that zone. And the main way to get in that zone is to just put your trust in God. Pray, be in his word. And I can't even stress that enough because it's like people want to want to know, like, how do I get closer to God? How do I get closer to God? You guys just read the Bible. <laughs> There's no better way to get closer to God. <laughs> um, Jennifer on YouTube says, yes, I still get tripped up looking at other people's journey and wonder why I can't be that far along too. 
Then I remember growing up in church, I had to go back to the basics, the milk Paul talks about, to fix the thinking that I had come out of and go into the understanding I'm being given by the Holy Spirit now. Amen to that. Mm -hmm. That's it. Sometimes comparison is the worst thing. What's up, Jasmine, Ooh. over on TikTok? Uh, again, you guys, if you're on TikTok, jump over to YouTube so you can get this full Bible study. You're only getting half of it if you're on TikTok. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, like I was saying, it, sometimes comparison is the worst thing ever. Comparison, when we compare our walk with other people's or our knowledge of the Bible or our knowledge of Jesus with other people's, that can be the most discouraging thing. Because first and foremost, like we were just talking about, you don't know how far those people are in their walk. You don't know how much time they spent in their Bibles. You don't know. You don't know all that stuff. You know what I mean? So don't get discouraged about it. Just if you want it, that knowledge, if you want, you know, uh, that that understanding, spend more time with God. Yeah, I think that comparison thing that goes that pretty much applies to I think everything in life mm -hmm. when it comes to like your kids, comparing your kids to other people's kids or your, oh, yeah. your life or your job or whatever else. Comparison is a is a killer for pretty much everything. I feel like trying, trying to keep up with the Joneses. Mm -hmm. Uh, legit says, when are we no longer considered a new Christian? Good Friday marks one year I've been a Christian. That's a really good question. And I feel like that's probably something that only you could probably answer. <laughs> um, I think it all depends on your growth in your faith. And Dave, you can add on to this as well. But I feel like it kind of just it's it depends on your growth in your faith, how, you know, the time you spend with God and how, I don't know, maybe how passionate I, what do you think, Dave? Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a tough question. Like I said, you're, you're always learning, you're always developing and, you know, so it's like an ongoing thing. Right. Cause you're a new Christian. Yeah. I guess when you, you know, when you first start, you're brand new, but then I think from then on really, it just kind of, learning and growing for forever basically so yeah it's tough to kind of make that mark when you go from new to old christian but i think it like you said it all depends on your your knowledge understanding and you know how much you are growing with god i mean what's the difference between a, a freshman in college and a senior in college right their education and how far along they've yeah. come in in their their studies right so if you're if you're new to christianity if you're new to the faith and you you know you know the gospel and you have your testimony that's great that's awesome you're able to to spread god's word and whatnot but if that's as far as you take it in my personal opinion this is just my opinion if that's as far as you take it and you never try to grow with god you can understand that and know that and have a and 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 that be it for 10 years and be considered a baby Christian, in my personal opinion. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's all about how you want to grow, your willingness to grow, and where you're at in your walk from there. Um, Kimberly Rush says, read his word, listen to worship music, cry out to him constantly, be still and notice the small blessing. Amen. I love that. Kimberly's over on Facebook. Uh, Jennifer says, yes, it can be then what's going on here. Oh, yes, it can be. Then you get to realize that comparing is just a stumbling block thrown out by the enemy to keep you locked in jealousy and stuff. Mm -hmm. I agree yep, with that. Definitely. And then legit says, I can tell I've learned a lot, but I still feel like I'm so behind other people. Don't compare yourself to other people like we were just talking. That's the hardest thing. And just like Jennifer said, that's one of the biggest stumbling blocks that the enemy throws out there is comparison. Yep. Yep. So. Everyone's journey is different. That's right. That's right. I love these conversations. All right, let's go ahead and jump in 18. We got 30 minutes to go in this hour. If we run over a little bit, it's all right. Uh, Carrie says comparison is the thief of joy. Truth. All right. Uh, Dave, do you want to get chapter 18? Excuse me. Ooh, I'm just about to burp. I'm sorry, everybody. Um, and 
go ahead and take us from verse one. I'm going to give you a little extra on this one, if you don't mind. All right. Uh, verse one down to verse nine. Okay. Let me get us down there. Hang on. Okay. <clears throat> there we go. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who, then, is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child to him and placed the child among them. And he said, Truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. If anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble, it would be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe to the world because of the things that cause people to stumble. Such things must come, but woe to the person through whom they come. If you're... If your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter the life maimed or crippled than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into eternal fire. And if, you call, if your eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the fire of hell. Sounds so gory that's, and gruesome, that's, right? <laughs> that's a... Uh, Intense verse right there. Intense. All right. Uh, all right. So let's go ahead and talk about this for a minute. Uh, legit says, does that verse mean if they cause little kids to stumble or any of God's kids, including adults, to stumble? Let's go ahead and talk about it for a minute. So uh, verse 18, I mean, I'm sorry, chapter 18, he called little child to him and placed the child among them. And he said, truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So the study note, we'll, we'll check out the study note first, and then uh, then we'll talk about it a little bit more. Uh, study note says, Jesus used a child to illustrate for his disciples how they should think and behave. We are not to be childish, like the disciples arguing over petty issues, but childlike. With humble, sincere, and trusting hearts, in what areas of your life do you tend to struggle with uh, child childishness? In what ways are making progress with childlikeness? So I know for myself for a little while there, um, even sometimes now, like uh, trying to have that childlike faith, you know, that childlike trust, like a child would have a trust in a parent or, or you know, a, a teacher or something like that. To have that childlike faith, um, I feel like sometimes like I need to remind myself um, do you think it's difficult to have that childlike faith sometimes when you just get carried away with life's stuff? Yeah, I think life can cause you to be a bit, a bit jaded sometimes, maybe, you know. It, uh, life tries to beat you down a little bit. And like I said, it's like with your kids in real life, you know, when they're little, they look up to you like you know everything and like they listen and respect everything that you say. That's kind of how I think how our relationship with with God is supposed to be. We're supposed to be kind of humble and willing to put our faith and trust into Him, without having to you know see everything or like have everything kind of physically shown to us. We need to have that kind of childlike faith where you you believe and trust in your in your Father. Yeah, no, I agree. I uh, I know sometimes, at least for a while there. I feel like having childlike faith is it's kind of hard to explain, but just like you said, it's just having that that trust, you know what I mean? Just just trusting that everything's going to get taken care of and think about it like with a child, right? They don't worry about where their food's going to come from. They don't worry about, you know, the clothes that they're going to put on themselves each day. They don't worry about any of that stuff, right? Because mommy and daddy's going to take care of it. Yeah, and that's right. what they know. And I feel like that's part of what having childlike faith is about is just trusting that God is going to take care of all of our situations. He's going to take care of every need that we have. He's going to make sure yeah. that we are fed, that we're clothed, that 
you know, we're guiding, being guided by his word and so on and so forth. And I think that's a big part of what it means to have childlike faith is to just have the trust in God that a child has in maybe their, their mother and father. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, I miss mm -hmm. those days when the kids just, you know, pretty much worshiped you and now they question everything you tell them. So, you know, yeah. You, uh, you know, you got, you got three at like all stages of life. So, mm -hmm. yep. um, I'm mine right now are at that stage that they think I'm a superhero. So <laughs> I love every second of it because I know eventually they're going to realize that I'm not a superhero. And mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like everything yep. is the coolest thing in the world that daddy does. And I love it. I absolutely love it. But I'm like, Oh, I know eventually they're going to realize that I'm not the mm -hmm. coolest person ever. <laughs> yeah. I remember my oldest used to be like, you're the tallest person I know. And that, like five foot seven, that doesn't happen very often. You know, yeah. so that was a, that was a good few years until she met a few other people like you. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, and then now she's getting tall enough to the point that she's almost as tall as you, if not taller, isn't she? They're getting there. They're getting there. They yeah. like to say they are, but they're not quite there yet. They're getting close. They're, they're creeping up. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, Jennifer says, oof, I so dislike that. That's not his name stuff. Like, obviously it's not his name, but I don't think the almighty won't answer because he, I'm a little confused to your comment because you we four. use, oh, oh, oh. Uh, the worst was, I'm sorry. I was just reading you guys. Um, the other part of this that I want to talk about that everybody I'm sure also wants to talk about is the gruesome gory part. Um, where it talks about gouging out your eye and cutting off your hand and all that fun stuff. Obviously, Jesus is not saying to actually physically gouge out your eyeball because that would be terrible. <laughs> um, I think he's talking about um, the stumbling blocks that we face um, each day and the stumble, the things that will cause us to stumble in our faith. And even the study note kind of points that out here. He says, Jesus says to remove stumbling blocks that causes us to sin. This does not mean to cut off a part of our body. For the church, it means that any person, program, or teaching that threatens the spiritual growth of the body must be removed. Um, for the individual, it means any relationship, practice, or activity that leads to sin should be stopped. Jesus says it would be better to go to heaven with one hand than hell with both. Sin, of course, affects more than our hands. It affects our minds and our hearts. So we, we, we talked about this in a, in a previous uh, Bible study that we had um, about you know how Jesus talks about uh, being the light of the world and all that stuff. Um, and it, I feel like I can kind of reference this to it in the sense where it says right here, Jesus says it would be better to go to heaven with one hand than to hell with both. Sin, of course, affects more than our hands. It affects our minds and hearts. So let me see if I can put this into words. Sin affects your minds and hearts, right? So being that light, that lamp for people to see, um, I just had this in my head, how I wanted to explain it, and now I can't explain it. Uh, sin, of course, affects more than our hands. It affects our minds and our hearts. So the 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 eye, that's what I meant, the eye being the light of, or the lamp of the body. This is what we discussed prior in a previous one. By the things that you see and do, it affects your mind and your heart and, and allowing that sin to come into your to your life, right? So where it says here, sin, of course, affects more than our hands. It affects our minds and our hearts. By allowing sin uh, to come into our lives as a stumbling block, um, we want to remove those things from our lives. That's part of the reason why I stopped watching like horror movies and things like that, because I found it to be a stumbling block. That's what I'm trying to say is is by that. And that's what Jesus is saying here. When you have, you know, it's better to cut off one hand than go to heaven with both hands and all this sin. You know what I mean? Um, what is it? Kimberly says, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you want to add on to my confusion there, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
you know, obviously it's an extreme, you know, example that, that Jesus gives there, but I think, like you're saying, he's just kind of emphasizing the point that, yeah. you know, how important it is to kind of keep things pure or keep focused on on the right things. He gives that extreme example that you'd rather gouge out your eye than kind of go to hell or go the wrong way. I think it's just a way of emphasizing his point. Right. And I feel like he uses extremes and he has to use extremes mm -hmm. for people to understand. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I'll be honest though, when I first started reading the Bible and I came across that verse, <laughs> I was like, what? Like, am I really supposed to be gouging out my eyes right. over here? <laughs> yeah. I'm not trying to do that. <laughs> yeah. Some things aren't are meant to be taken too literally. Yeah. Right. But and that's the problem when people don't spend time in in the word, you know, actually studying and praying it. That's where people take things literal. You know what I'm saying? Like a perfect example is a, a lot of atheists that I run into on my social medias. They go through the Bible. They'll read a lot of a lot of them know the Bible better than some Christians do, but they don't understand the context of it or they take things too literal. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. That's why it's good to uh, to spend time in prayer, you guys. Don't take, don't take, don't gouge your eyes out. All right, just, just don't remove the sin from your life. That's what Jesus is trying to to express to to explain here. You know, don't don't that sin is going to cause you to stumble in your faith, right? Um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and read from verse ten to fourteen. Let me go ahead and pull up the Bible. There we go. 10 to 14. The parable of the wandering sheep. It says this. Where am I at here? 10 to, okay. See what you do not despise, one of these little ones, for I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven. What do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hills and go to look for the one that wandered uh, wandered off? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he is happier about the one sheep than about the ninety-nine that did not wander off. In the same way, your father in heaven is not willing that any, I'm sorry, yeah, is not willing that any of these little ones should perish. Uh, and the study note says these words ring out sharply in cultures where children are taken lightly, ignored, or terminated before they have a chance to chance at life. If the angels assigned these little ones have direct access to God, the least can do the least we can do is to provide children easy access to us, no matter how busy our schedules are. Man, that hits because my look, hey. I know you know our schedules are slam packed, especially these days, right? I, I can't speak for back in Jesus's day, but I know when my when I was growing up as a kid, my parents they each had their own jobs, but they didn't have to do side hustles and all this other stuff. But like, man, I feel like these days, the times that we live in, if you don't have like a full time job and each parent has a side hustle, <laughs> and then not to mention trying to keep up with keeping the house clean and doing all the activities that your kids want to do all the sporting events you got, you know, you, you, you all up in some sporting sports yeah. stuff right now with, with the mm -hmm. girls and trying to keep up with all that stuff and make sure everybody's on time and bills are getting paid and um, cars keep up to date, just <laughs> all the slam pack schedules. It's very easy to get pulled away from the importance of, Mm -hmm. making sure that your children have easy access to you. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's easy to get sidetracked with all the things that we need to do. But really the most important thing we have to do is be there for our children. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, it's, it's always, it's tough. There's always, you know, always things going on, but that's the one thing I feel like the kids, when they look back, that's the kind of thing they remember, right? They remember the, the time you spent with them and the things you did with them more so than, you know, maybe you bought this thing for them or you did things like that. They, they don't necessarily remember that as much as they remember the time you, you know, spent the afternoon with them and either played with them or, you know, just spent some time and talked to them. But right. I think time 
time with the kids is probably the, the most important thing and the thing they'll remember the most in the future. Right. And I think I want to add on to that. And I think it's not just not just time with the kids, but also time with the kids and spending some of that time to talk about, you know, talk to them about God, talk to them about the teachings of the Bible, or maybe just spending some time with them reading the Bible. I know with my kids, um, we've we go in spurts. Sometimes we're really good at right before bed. We'll sit down, we'll, we'll read the Bible or we'll read, you know, the kids Bibles to them. Um, and then sometimes we just get, you know, they go into bed late and they just got to go right to bed. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's tough, man. Like making sure that you're always talking to them about God and about Jesus and, and, you know, making yeah. sure that they see your relationship with God too, and right. you're spending time with them. Like I, it's one thing that I has been like I I've studied a lot about, I've read a lot about, and I, I want that's something that I never saw when I was growing up as my parents because I wasn't raised a Christian. My my mom was you know, I was baptized Catholic. My mom was claim to be Catholic, but she the only time we went to church was you know on Christ, Christmas and Easter. And, um, like I never saw my parents read the Bible or anything like that. And so I never had a relationship with, with God until, you know, I had to go through the darkness in my life, which you guys, I'll share my testimony one of these days, uh, via the YouTube channel. But, uh, um, I think it's a very important for our kids to see our faith, um, see, have them see us spending time in God's word, obviously at church, praising and worshiping, um, and praying too. Like we, we make sure that we pray with our kids every single, uh, every single night before bed. Cause I want them to understand the importance of prayer. You know what I mean? Uh, and that's how they see when they see that we are prioritizing God, then they, I feel like they'll prioritize God. Yeah. So. I think one of the, one of the coolest things, one of the best things is when you're kid reminds you maybe you forgot to pray one time or you forget something and they're, they're the ones that tell you you know we need to pray and yeah that's a that's a cool thing you know to to see them in that you know remembering that kind of stuff and prioritizing that kind of stuff it's happened a couple times at dinner time too i'll be like mm, ah, and they're like wait we forgot <laughs> to pray and i'm like all right. <laughs> you know I mean? uh, oh hey god tiktok's messing up over here they're making me do this puzzle piece thing uh, not that anybody's really viewing over there anymore. Oh, I got six people over there. What's up, guys? If you want to catch everything, go over to YouTube. <laughs> uh, Dan says, Chad, you're always there for your kids. I can vouch for that. Well, I appreciate that, bro. <clears throat> he can vouch for that because we always play in Fortnite, me, him, and Benny. <laughs> so uh, Tara says, time with your wife is important too. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. We're not, we're not uh, saying that. It's not important. We're just talking about the kids right now. <laughs> Definitely 100% important. Got to spend time with the spouse. Uh, da, 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 da. Hang on, guys. I'm clicking a couple things here. Um, verse 10. I think I just read that. Nope. Here we go. Let me see. Verse 10 says, the, the study note uh, says also, there's two two study notes for verse 10. It says, this verse provides reassurance for parents. We must remember that angels administer God's care. Um, angels are not to be the objects of our worship or prayers, but they do serve God and work to carry out his purpose. And God uses them to care for those we love, including our children. Uh, and that's it. Fun stuff. Um, all right. So what did I just read? 10 through 14? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Jennifer on t YouTube says it is amazing that my daughter, when she noticed my mood isn't right, will start screaming. Don't stop praying by Matthew West at the top of her lungs lately. I love it. That's awesome. All right. Um, Dave, do you want to pick up verse 10 through 14? Okay. Or did I just read that? I think you, yeah, I think I you read, read through 14. Right. So 15 through 19. Okay. If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. 
if they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen, even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in, loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there I am, I, I am, sorry, there am I with them. Yeah, it's a little tricky right there. Twi- <laughs> right? Yeah, <man. laughs> Don't worry, it happens to me all the time. Uh, everybody will tell you in this chat, I'd be stumbling over words all the time. <laughs> some some nights are better than others. Uh, no, but that's uh, I love that. And and verse twenty, I think uh, that's that's a big one that a lot of people stick on specifically because that mm-hmm. and, uh, they talk about where two or three are gathered, which is the emphasis of going to church, right? Mm-hmm. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I with them. Um, I'll just hit on the study note cause it breaks down verse. It's kind of a long study note. Goodness gracious. 15 through 17 says there are Jesus guidelines for dealing. These are Jesus guidelines for dealing with those who sin against us. They were meant for number one, Christians, not unbelievers Two, sins committed against you and not others. And three conflict resolution in the context of church, not the community at large. Jesus's words are not a license for a frontal attack on every person who hurts or slights us. They are not a license to start a destructive gossip campaign or to call for a church trial. Jesus gives an orderly way to handle conflicts with increasing public accountability at each step. We should first appeal to the individual and his or her conscience. If that doesn't work, then the community should be called in, but gradually, first with a few, then more. Jesus urges us to reconcile wherever conflict among believers threatens a damaged relationship or the church community so that all can live in harmony. When someone wrongs us, we often do the opposite of what Jesus recommends. We turn away in hatred or resentment, seek revenge or engage in gossip, verbal counterattacks or smear campaigns. By contrast, we should go to that person first, as difficult as that may be. Then we should forgive them as often as they need it. This will create much better chance of restoring relationships. And that's that's a hundred percent true. I mean, how yeah. often have you ever gotten into an argument with somebody or disagreed with somebody and just <laughs> cut them off completely? You know what I mean? Right. Um, I mean, it's happened to me countless times, and I hear people at work. Oh my gosh, some of the guys at work, man, you, you they, 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 they are crazy. <laughs> But yeah, it's uh, it's uh, countless times they might have some hatred for somebody, or not necessarily hatred, but just some some discontent. And rather than uh, work on it or or go directly to that person, that, yeah. that's one thing that drives me insane about some of these folks, man. Especially like I said, it worked because they have complaints and complaints, but they complain to each other instead of going mm-hmm. directly to the person that, that they're complaining about. And I'm yeah. a firm believer in that. Like, but don't go aggressively <laughs> go to have a conversation and have yeah. some resolution. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think half the time problems stem from just misunderstandings, you know, right. and by talking to the person, you know, civilly approaching it, in like a humble way or in a, a way when you want to listen to that person, but just talking about it would resolve a lot of the problems rather than just either keeping it inside, letting it build up, murmuring with other people on the side or you know, posting it on Facebook. That's not, right. not the best way to resolve, resolve issues. I don't think I ever see, well, I don't really go on Facebook that much. <laughs> Sorry, everybody who's on Facebook. <laughs> I do check some of y'all's comments, but I get so much hate over there that I just jump over. I'll skim through, glance at some, and then I, I'm i gone. But um, yeah, no, I, I completely agree. And it's funny that you brought up Facebook. I'll talk to you about that offline sometime, though. But right. anyway, 
Uh, mm-hmm. Let's go ahead and, and keep pushing through because we're we're hitting that hour mark, and I know I'm getting tired. I'm sure some of y'all are. I gotta get up early. Um, do you want to? Or did you just read? Yeah, you just read. I did. Yeah. I'll, I'll hit this next part. Um, I'll hit. I'll take us to the end of the chapter. Jesus tells the parable of the unforgiving debtor. I just want to make sure that I'm hitting. Okay, when I hit verse 29, I got a scroll. So, all right, let's go ahead and jump over here. Uh, before wait, before I do, I want to hit Jennifer's comment over here. She says, "I think sa- some of it has to do is our tone and how we come to them. Like if we come in humility and open, people tend to be more open to conversations." No, I 100% agree with that. And that's that's that right there, Jennifer, is what gets me in trouble and Dave can attest to this is my tone. It's my tone. My wife yeah. tells me all the time that it's my tone because I come off, you know, I got that New York tone. So I come off aggressive a lot of the times. Uh, Jennifer also says, but if we come to them with hurt and offense or blame, it can cause down, cause, close down the conversation. 100%. Yep. Nope. I agree with that. Uh, my tone is something that I is an ongoing thing that I got to work on. So. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump uh, jump into the, the verses here. Jesus tells the parable of the unforgiving debtor. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owned him owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owned him as or owed him a uh, hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. Let me scroll up a little bit here. Uh, he demanded his fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. When the master called the servant in, you wicked servant, he said, I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant as just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. So the first question I have is if they're in jail, how are they paying things back? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. I don't know if they work it off or something. Oh, right. Yeah. But I mean, if he's being tortured, I, I feel like that's kind of like like he says here. Or like Jesus says here, this is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister. It's almost like almost like a glimpse of what hell would be like. Right. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your servants as in anger? His master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all that he owed. Um, Versus. Let me see here. Let's study note. Verse 35. Verse 34, verse 35 says, because God has forgiven all of our sins, we must not withhold forgiveness from others. As we realize how completely Jesus has forgiven us, it should produce a grateful flood of forgiveness toward others. When we don't forgive others, we are settling or setting ourselves above Jesus's law of love. And I would completely agree with that. And 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 that's one of the hardest things to do sometimes is to is to forgive people, right? But I'll tell you what, you guys, even though forgiveness is one of the hardest things to do, if you want complete peace in your life, forgiveness is a must. 
You know what I mean? And it is hard. It is hard sometimes to forgive people. I mean, I got some people in my past that have really, really hurt me dearly. And and you just got to let it go. You got to let go of that pain. And it's easier said than done because sometimes, you know, it's easy to just be like, all right, well, I forgive you. But do you really forgive that person? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, forgiveness, like you said, I mean, forgiveness is as much about your own heart and your own kind of peace than it is about the other person. You know, if you hold on to that, hold on to that hatred or hold on to that, it's going to hurt you more than them. So I think mm-hmm. forgiveness is, is really about you and you kind of moving on and you letting go of that, of that hatred or that anger. No, I, I agree. And I like that you put it that way, that, that forgiveness is hurting you more than it's hurting them. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, you guys, you might be mad at somebody and they don't even know that you're <laughs> mad at them. You know what I mean? So you're just holding on to that anger and that frustration. And this person is just going about living their life, right? They don't, they don't know. They don't care. You know what I mean? And you're just hanging on to it. So just like Dave said, it is hurting you way more than it is hurting them. So, you know, you don't have to like a person, but to forgive them, right? You don't have to love love them. You don't have to go spend time with them or anything like that. I mean, there's people in my past that I have forgiven. And if I ran into them, I don't like them, right? But don't forget that God loves all of us, right? We're all God's children. So I don't have to like somebody to forgive them for the pain that they've hurt, they've caused me. Uh, Tara uh, over on YouTube says forgiveness is extremely tough. Still trying to forgive my husband. Ooh, I'm sorry, Tara. Jennifer, um, Tara, I would suggest um, if you guys are still together, obviously, uh, I am learning a lot. And I talk about this book a lot. I love this book is helping me personally in my marriage. It's called Love and Respect. I'm currently reading it. I love this book. It is by Dr. Emerson Eggeriches. Um, you know, I got no affiliation with him or this book other than the fact that it is helping me a lot in my marriage um, to be a better husband. But it's for husbands and wives, something you might want to check out. Um, and then Jennifer says, it can take a lot of time to forgive having to let go of something right now and not let that offense build up. But I've put distance between me and that person because I can't trust them. And that's that's the best thing right there. Um, she says, problem is, it's my husband's wife. Wait, what? I'm so confused right now. My husband's what? I'm assuming ex-wife? ex-wife? Maybe ex- ex-husband? Yeah, or ex-wife? So. It's my husband's, I'm assuming ex-wife. So I can only put so much distance. Yeah, ex-wife. Okay. Whew. <laughs> that just gonna, that was going to be weird. Anyway, <laughs> it's my husband's ex-wife. That's what we thought. Um, so I can only put so much distance there because they share my two stepdaughters. Man, that's a tough situation, Jennifer. Um, but I completely get it. And and distance uh, can sometimes be the best healer and sometimes be the best way to forgive somebody. Um, anyway. That uh, that's pretty much it, you guys. If nobody has anything else, Dave, you don't have any anything else you want to talk about. Uh, we can go ahead and wrap this up for tonight, you guys. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on here. Absolutely. <clears throat> Uh, I appreciate everybody who's joined. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this out in prayer. You good? <laughs> Jennifer says YouTube trying to tell lies on me. All right, let's go ahead and and pray, you guys. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for blessing us this evening with all the people that joined us on this Bible study live tonight. And we pray that you just push it out to so many others that it can help. Uh, We thank you, Lord, for blessing us with Dave to be here this evening. And we just ask that your word and the things that we discussed this evening touch the hearts of those that see this Bible study live. We ask, Lord, that you continue to lead us, teach us, guide us, shape us, and mold us each and every day. Help us to grow closer with you in a relationship and just be filled with your presence because your way is better than ours. And we cannot live this life without you, Lord. Father, we thank you for all that you do for us. It is in Jesus' mighty and gracious name we pray. Amen. Amen.
All right, man. Thank you so much for joining thank everybody you. in the chat. Thank you guys for being here. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Dave, I will see you later this week. See you later. Later, brother. Do, do, do. Let me go back here. Where's all my stuff? There we go. All right. Bye.